All right, so this is the lecture. Uh, this will be the last part of the lesson. Um, chapter 10, President Mandela. On February 11, uh, 1990, at 4.15 p.m., Nelson Mandela stepped out of prison. He was 71 years old, and he has spent 10,000 days behind bars. Outside Cape Town City Hall 50, thousands of people gathered to hear him speak. He chanted, Amandla, power, which meant the power is ours. All the people hadn't seen Mandela in, in, a, in a so long, they didn't know what to expect. Younger South Africans had never seen him. They expected an old man tired to get involved in politics. They were wrong. Freedom had recharged Mandela. He took a trip around the world where he was greeted with cheering crowds. In his own country, he argued with many black South Africans who still did not want to work with white South Africans or hear about forgiveness. Violence had been pan of their lives, uh, for their lives so long, it seemed like the only answer. Nelson still believed that black people and white people should work together. He thought they could put their problems behind them. White South Africans wanted Mandela to praise the government and be grateful for being let out of prison. Instead, he encouraged foreign countries to keep refusing to trade with South Africa until Aparo was truly gone for good. He demanded nothing less than one person, one vote. He said, when I was sent to prison 27 years ago, I had no vote. When I came out, I still had no vote. That is due to the color of my skin. President the clerk dragged his feet when it came to real change. He may have been hoping that in time Mandela influence will fade. Black South Africans were frustrated at the lack of change. In August 1992, the ANC led a nationwide general strike, the largest in South Africa's history. In their demand to end apartheid, people all over the country refused to go to work. A month later, in Bishon, South Africa soldiers opened fire on the, an ANC rally, killing 28 people and wounding almost 200 more. On September 26, 1992, Mandela and the clerks signed a record of understanding. It said that they will try to come to an agreement about the government. In 1993, Mandela and the clerk were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, and again, something went happened wrong here with the uh, conversion of the file. However, um, this will be um, based on the image I'm seeing right here. Uh, this is the, um, uh, the the person who was honored with the name of this award, the Nobel Peace Prize, is given annually. And what this war, award means is simply uh, try bringing the, bringing the most positive change in the world. Uh, it's something that is really significant. Um, Mandela and the clerk received that award, and it shows that, you know, based on their actions, uh, the, this spoke volumes across the world. The following year, in April, South Africa held its first truly democratic election. The country will vote for representatives in the Senate and the National Assembly, as well as local governments in the provinces. Any of South Africa's over 40 million citizens were, who were adults could vote, including black people. The man millions of new voters. Nelson Mandela entered the race for president. It's hard to imagine how exciting this was for black South Africans. When Canada Mandela's water care rolled into the, a town, people rushed out, out cheering. They chanted his name, dancing in the streets, and climbed lampposts just to get a glimpse of their hero. Of course, Nelson's friends, Walter Sisulu, helped him in his... Campaign for president. Sadly, Nelson's other closest friends, Oliver Tambo, did not live to see the South Africa's first truly democratic election. He died of a stroke on April 24, 1983. Without all of his work, Nelson might never have been released from prison. Nelson ran for president against the clerk. During the four days of the election, people stood in line for hours to vote. When all the results were counted, the ANC had won 252 seats out of 400 in the National Assembly. That meant 252 black representatives in the national government. They also won 60 of 90 seats in the Senate. The clerk lost the presidency. As a runner-up, he will serve as deputy president. He will be the first white deputy president to serve under a black South African. On May 10, 1994, Nelson Mandela became the first black president of South Africa. Mandela served for five years. The people often call him Tata, meaning father or prisoner 46664, out of respect for his years at Robben Island. 
Mandela didn't have a lot of experience running a government, and South Africa was more difficult than most. Even computer records for white citizens and black citizens were kept in two completely different databases on two different computer systems. For once, Nelson did not have to uh, water was a Sulu working by his side. His term retired from politics after the election. He died in 2003. South Africa's new constitution outlawed discrimination of all kinds, but many black South Africans still lived in poverty, and Nelson wanted to help them. He donated much of his salary as president to a fund to fund a poor uh, fund poor children. Even in his personal life, uh, Nelson was still making changes. On his 80th birthday, he got married again to uh, Rachel Michael, uh, a children's rights activist whom he had first met on a visit to Mozambique. Mandela stepped down as, uh, from the presidency in 1989. Nelson was replaced by Thabo McKay, followed by Kangla Motalama and uh, Jacob Zuma, all were black South Africans who were members of the ANC. But Mandela's days of tree shaking were not over. He devoted himself to educating South Africans about AIDS. This cause was one of the was very personal to him. His own son, Makaro, died of the disease in 2005. Nelson never stopped fighting for South Africans, but he finally could enjoy some time with his family. In 2010, he appeared at the World Cup soccer tournament, which South Africa hosted that year. It was the last time he appeared in public. He moved back to the, to the village of his childhood where friends visited him often. Surrounded by his three remaining children, 17 grandchildren, and a growing number of great grandchildren with his wife by his side, Nelson Mandela looked out on the different side of uh, South Africa, a South Africa that he helped create. Nelson Mandela died on December 5th, 2013, at his home in Hookdom, Johannesburg, of complications related to a resp respiratory infection he suffered from his last in the last years of his life. People all over the world mourned Mandela and celebrated the legacy of peace and freedom. All right, uh, that concludes the book. Um, this is pretty much the end of the lesson, um, and also the end of the unit. Um, I'm going to make the questions very generic, very uh, thorough. I just want you guys to relax. Um, and on Thursday, I have an announcement to make to you guys, and we'll see what happens with that. Okay, with that said, guys, uh, have a great day. I'll see you guys soon.